In Illustrator 221, you can combine width tool as well as appearances and create some quite unusual designs with the new object repeat feature. And that's with the radial option, something like this. You can see over here in appearance, the key panel here is appearance. And of course you can use the other tools as well. You've got other panels here, but so window and appearance, that's gonna be the main one. So I'm gonna show you, obviously I'm not gonna be able to create exactly the same design again, but I'm just gonna quickly show you an approach to creating all kinds of different designs. Now I'm actually currently in isolation mode and then just gonna remove this design. Now you can also expand that, so you can go to object and expand if you want to. Now the result may be a bit of a mess of lots and lots of parts, so you may or may not want that. So I'm just gonna, I could keep that. Now, what you can do, you can start from something very, very simple, which is just a basic straight line. And you can angle it, of course, you can apply that. And you can see with the appearance, you've got just a stroke, you've got nothing there. So you can give it a color. So I'm just gonna go there, black. And you can set, say, six point, something like that. Now with the width tool, there's the width tool. Now I'm always, when I go over here, I quite often end up looking for the width tool, but there it is. It always looks quite similar to some of the tools. So there's the width tool. And you can manipulate this, this design. Now what you can do then is you can go over here to the appearance, appearance panel. It's useful because you can add additional strokes as well as fills and lots more, of course, than that but it's very useful for that. And you can reposition it so you can rearrange them, so you can layer them on top of each other, these strokes. So what you can do, you can go to add new stroke. It's on the right side menu and add new stroke. And you can see then, now this that new stroke is layered on top. So I'm just gonna go, say for a different color. So I've got there, but what you can do with stroke, you can go down here, and you've got profile. That's a quick, easy way. You can, of course, go straight to the whip tool, but you can add a profile directly. Now I could go to this one, this stroke, and I can add a different profile. So that design, and you can see the underlying design there, but you can still go to over here to the whip tool and you can manipulate. And now you can see which one you're working with. I always find it easier to click there. You've got the little eye there, so you can tick the Visibility makes it easier just to manipulate it because otherwise sometimes it will just have a tendency to select the one you don't want to select. But if you've removed all the others, you can then work with this one in particular. So you can resize it. Just actually resize the correct one. It does help. So it does just go there. And I'm working on that line there. Now what I can also do, I can also add additional, see with the curvature tool, I can just add some additional points so you can create some more complex design. Now, you notice I haven't got the radial at this point. Well, I'm just gonna add the radial. So for the whole of this path, now what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna go to object, down to repeat and a radial. And you can see the design there. Now, if I go double click on there, doesn't do anything, but double click into this and you can edit that design. And again, you can see you've got this. And of course, I've still got this one not enabled. So I'm just gonna quickly bring it back. So you can still see it's there. I haven't lost it just because I didn't have it visible when I created that radial object. And again, always object, repeat and radial. Now there's some things you can't do with radial. You can't sort of, duplicate the radial to create in a, using this appearance panel. I would love to see that, but doesn't seem to offer that option. You go to the radial thing, it will just not offer any sort of adding stroke, etc. It will expand it, which is fine, but it would be nice if you could create a very more complex shape. But however, what I've got here is two strokes. And of course I can still manipulate this design here and I'm using the black one now. And again, I always think it's best just to, you don't have to, you can of course use this, but sometimes it's just easier if you don't want to, you can just remove the red one for a bit. So you can just resize that. And of course what you can do, you can still go over to curvature tool and you can still continue to manipulate this design. So you can continue to do that. And you can also modify the position there, the various points, 
upgrade that if you want. And also what you can do, you can go over here to the selection. Now you're in isolation mode. You're not, you can't modify the repeats at this point. But you can recheck, you can change that, you can resize that, do all kinds of different things. Now what you can also do up here, you can go there, you can go and add another stroke if you want. So on top, you've got another obviously red. I'm just going to change the color. It's much easier, obviously, if I, I could have multiple reds. Perfectly reasonable, but I'm just going to change it maybe to blue this time. And again, what you can do, if you want to, quickly click there for the stroke, and then you can go down here, and you've got profile, so you can quickly go there. And then well, you don't have to do that. You can do it, but I always like just to go with the deep, this nice little profile because it's already nicely curved. It's got some width, there, width tool. And again, I can going to manipulate that one. Width tool, select width tool. And you can see the point. You can add, add additional points. So you can resize that. And you can then see, obviously, the red more. Or you can resize that, squeeze that, or maybe make that like that. Perfectly reasonable. Now, also, what you can do, you can just resize that. But you can also go to effect. So effect, maybe go for stylize and drop shadow. So, you know, add a nice drop shadow just to that blue one. So the blue one is the only one with that thing. And you can expand these out so you can see drop shadow. If you don't want the drop shadow, you can always remove it. So you just click there again on this visibility, or you can delete it down here to bin there. So you delete just that drop shadow. So you've got the strokes, and now it's made up of three strokes. And you can still, now I can come out there. I'm just gonna come out now. And I can now manipulate this design. I can rotate it, create all kinds of different unique things. You can modify a number of instances. Maybe make more or less, all just using these various controls. But you can also still double click again and go in to the design, resize that, manipulate that. And of course, all these strokes are still there. And you can remove them if you don't want them. So you can just deselect like that. Now, what you can also do now I could also, of course, keep adding additional, I could have 10 or 15 strokes added, so you could make a really complex design. But also what you can also do, you can go to Effect, and then you can go to, say, like Distort. There's Free Distort, if you're reasonable. There's also Transform. Now, Transform's are really nice, because what you can do, instead of having it on that line, at the moment, it's still on that exactly, exactly the same as the red and the black, but you can just use this. And I've got preview on, that's a key thing. Sometimes pre, I don't know why we preview. Sometimes it's on, sometimes it doesn't, but it's nice that it's on. And you can then just modify the horizontal. So you can see you can move that alone. So that's just shifted now. And vertical, you can do that, move that. So you can move it down or up. So you can create some more interesting designs, I think. And also you can modify the scale. So you can scale it. And also you can go to angle. So if you want to, you can have it rotate that way. Turn around like that. You go for reflect, reflect Y, and do those. And also, of course, it's patterns and all those sorts of things. But even more interesting is you can actually go to copies. So you can set that to say three. Oops, don't want that. So three copies, so you can create some weird sort of, un now obviously with this angle associated, I'm just gonna remove the angle. So you can see now I've got the scale and you can see it just changing. Obviously I've got three copies as it goes around and obviously you can modify those and you can see then go out, those sort of things. And now of course what you can also do, you can still, you're still in this and you can still resize it. You can change those. Now, I've applied that to the blue. You can see it transform there. But you can also, of course, simply go to the black. Just select that line. And then, of course, go to Effect and Transform. And you can see then that's applied as well. And, of course, the transform is the same, so you end up. But you can, of course, have different. You can modify the horizontal. You could set it, keep it at 100%. It doesn't have to be doesn't have to be changed at all. So 100%, you can also change the horizontal. 
and so and so on. So there's a whole heap of different designs and you don't have to go with three, you can go with two. Or maybe 10. And of course, what you can also do, and I'm just gonna put that down to two, it's a bit extreme. Now I'm using black there. Of course, what you could do, you could go with a gradient instead. So instead of black, you've got a gradient there. And of course, the gradient, what you can do, you can modify the gradient in numerous kinds of ways. Just go to the gradient tool. So the gradient tool over here, and you can manipulate that gradient. It says, gradient tool, doesn't look like you can actually. <laughs> That's a bit, bit odd. However, obviously you could have a library of different gradients there. That's a very strange thing. I'm not certain why the gradient tool doesn't allow me to manipulate the gradient. Very peculiar. However, of course, you could bring in, obviously you've got uh, window and swatches. You could bring, maybe you can't do that there, so I'm just gonna come out. Now, of course, you could always go to window and swatches, and you can bring in maybe a library of gradients. Go open the swatch library. You could have a library of different gradients here, which you can then bring in and then apply. So you can create all kinds of different colors, even if it doesn't let you, for some weird reason, manipulate the actual gradient. Now, I'm certain someone will put a comment in the uh, comments box to say, the reason is because X, Y, Z. But I must admit, it uh, escapes me at this point doing this tutorial. However, what you can still do, again, let's say you can double click on any of those, and you can manipulate the design still continue and of course you can create overly complex and messy designs like this i'm not saying it's the most elegant of designs but you can see you can create all kinds i just wanted to show you that you can use the appearance panel which is there as well as of course the width tool and of course the new repeat feature and of course i'm using this in the radial option but you can of course use the grid as well and mirror so you could do exactly the same in the mirror in fact, I could do that now. So I've got that design there, and I can now just kind of come out of that, just to quickly show you that I can do that. You got there, what you can do, you can go to object. You could, of course, expand it. You could expand the whole thing, you've got the design there. Now also what you can do, you can drag this whole design over into the library. And you can then use this in Photoshop if you want to use this, maybe not this particular design, it's not the world's greatest, but you could use it, you can do, go down here and repeat and release. And then what you get is the design, which is, which is nice. You can obviously manipulate that design. Now, what I'm gonna do, just go over here to the stroke, go to the gradient, again, the gradient, hmm. very strange, window, Gradient. Okay, let's see, I obviously can use that instead. I always thought you could do it with the gradient tool. <laughs> Very strange. Click there, and of course you can change the color if you want to bring up a different color. Like that. So you can manipulate, and no, I'm just gonna manipulate those, I don't want that. Move that around there. You can create all kinds of different gradient designs. And of course, you don't have to create that. You can go for maybe a radial design. Now, that unfortunately is not available. You can see the sort of design. But then, what I wanted to show, because I've completely gone off topic, object and repeat and mirror. And then you've got the design there. And you see, you've got that. And then you can manipulate that design as well. So you can create all kinds of unusual designs that way. And of course, what you can do, come out of that, and you've got your mirrored design there, and you can see continue to recite, modify that, but you can also go to object and repeat and radial again, exactly as before, and then manipulate that. And again, all points, these, various features, all the various gradients, strokes, etc. that I've combined using this appearance palette is they're all available to be modified. Maybe slightly unusual in different ways, but 
you can modify them. Sadly, you can't go for a radial repeat and manipulate that and add additional fills. I've noticed when you just go over here and you say, go, oh, add new stroke. It expands it. Obviously, you, so you can add it, but it expands it, which is not ideal. It would be nice if it didn't expand it and you could just add it on top and then manipulate and then add multiple radial repeats on top of that. But here's not to be the case. I suppose there are limits to uh, how far you can push this feature. And there you can see the design there. So you can create some very unusual, complex radial designs, which of course, again, I say, can be added to your Creative Cloud library for use in Photoshop, After Effects, or whatever. Hope you found this tutorial of interest. Please subscribe to the Graphic X channel. Always adding new tutorials about Illustrator, Photoshop, Finity Photo, Finity Designer, and many, many others. Also, please add some comments. What things did I do right? What things did I do wrong? If I want, maybe I should explain something a bit better. Maybe you're going to point out things why certain things didn't work in the way that I thought they might at that exact moment. I have to say, sometimes Illustrator surprises me. I think, hmm, okay. It's also a dislike or like. Thank you much.